Good afternoon. This is Ron Graham, the president of Haven. Glad you're here today. Um, it's been a historic week in many ways. And unfortunately, um, social media has been right up front in the middle of this. This has been uh, one of those cases that really emphasizes the importance of using social media and using it appropriately. Um, I appreciate y'all being here. Some uh, Everyone has their own ways of using Facebook and everyone has their own things they get out of Facebook. Um, we felt that social media is such a big part of our world today that um, the month of January we dedicated to this. So we've got a good presentation today that's going to cover the nuts and bolts of Facebook. So um, anybody want to take care of the housekeeping part, raising the hands and such? Uh, we have Terrence and Nellie here as co-hosts with me. Okay. Um, oh, as, no, as, as we've done it in the past, you know, um, when you want to ask a question or make a comment, you can raise your hand. And to raise your hand, I believe it's Alt-Y on the computer, Command-Y on the Mac, Star 9 if you're on dial-in, or under the More tab if you're on the app. Thank you, Terrence. And if y'all have questions during the presentation, um, you know, just raise your hand. Um, Nellie's going to be uh, between Nellie and Terrence. We're going to take care of questions. Um, we uh, have our capable tech associate here. Um, Raul will be walking you through the. Uh, workings of Facebook, and we're glad you're here today. Roll, are you ready? I am ready, and thank you very much. All right, take it away, sir. All right, so one of the first things that we're going to start with is by doing something that is not new to Zoom, but I believe it is new to the Haven workshops, and that is to offer a poll. So uh, the way that polls work in Zoom is that if you are connecting to the meeting with the app, whether you're on your smartphone, tablet, or computer, you will see a pop-up on your screen that will have the poll questions. Sometimes the polls are multiple questions with multiple answers, but today we're gonna keep it simple. Considering that the topic is fun with Facebook, the poll is about your Facebook experience. And so I'm gonna launch the poll here shortly and then uh, give people an opportunity to take take that poll and, and respond to it as I continue on with, with, uh, with my presentation, and then I'll be able to share the answers, the poll answers with, with folks. So the poll, like I said, is gonna have one question, and that question is, what is your Facebook experience? There will be three answers. The answers, um, if you choose to participate, the answers are that you use Facebook from the Facebook app on your iPhone or Android. The next answer is that you use Facebook primarily from your computer, uh, Mac or PC computer. And the third one is that you don't use Facebook at all. And so this will kind of give us a, a chance to see what, um, what the answers are. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now. So you should see the pop up on your screen now. And um, I suspect that if you don't see it, it could be that you might be a co-host. I forgot that I don't know if co-hosts are allowed to take the poll. So my apologies if that's the case. All right, so we um, are going to talk about Facebook today. So Facebook is uh, it's, a, it's a platform that has been around since around 2004. And in terms of social media, it replaced what was then the social media platform called MySpace. And at that time in 2004, 2005, people didn't really call it social media. I'm not really sure when that term started. Um, I didn't look that one up, but 
Facebook is sort of the the end all and be all of a lot of social media. There are people who don't use Facebook for various reasons, but when you t typically think of social media nowadays, the three programs that come up in most cases are going to be, our platforms rather, are going to be Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, there are a dime a dozen out there that, that are for social media. But today, we're going to talk about Facebook. And so there is a saying that I am very fond of and that people have gotten very brave because of Facebook. And you will, you will see that, that people will often say stuff on Facebook that they won't say in person because they've gotten a little brave, right? So the saying is, I can say whatever I want to say to your Facebook. So, you know, we, we, I kind of say that as tongue in cheek humor, but one of the things about Facebook is you can use it for multiple things. Some people will use it to keep tabs with their friends and family. Uh, my, my one single remaining grandmother is on Facebook. She's in her mid eighties and she loves Facebook. And the only reason she uses Facebook is so that she can see all the pictures and all the videos of her grandkids and great grandkids. And in some cases, her great, great grandkids. And so that's all she does. She never posts anything, but that's her way of keeping up because the grandkids and great grandkids and great, great grandkids don't call her. You know, it's not like we call her parents for uh, people of the older generation where phone calls are still expected. Nobody calls her to tell her happy birthday, anything like that. They'll just uh, send her a Facebook happy birthday. And that that's acceptable with a lot of the younger generation. So, so someone who's in their 80s can use Facebook. Anybody who is um, of pretty much any age, you may use it for writing a post to share your life, share what you're doing, share major events. Like for example, I shared that I got married recently. Uh, when when Stacy and I got engaged, we shared that. When we started our business, we shared that. So people will often share. Um, I would say that for me, I'm kind of a casual Facebook user in the sense that I don't post every day. My personal feeling on Facebook is that I would rather post quality than quantity, right? And so I try to make my posts count in terms of my own moral code and my own, uh, you know, my own scale. I don't judge them on what others do. So just in, in my own feelings, I try to make it so that whatever I'm posting, I'm just going to make it count. So I'm not going to post that today I cleaned house. I'm not going to post that, you know, I, I got a new, I might post that I got a new vacuum because I did, right? So I might share that just to get feedback and opinion. But there are people who use it to post every aspect of their life every day. Um, I, I've seen people have posts on there that literally are more than 20 posts per day, you know, so there, that's, that's another kind. And then another usage for Facebook is maybe you can follow Facebook groups or what are called Facebook pages. And a group is basically, well, Haven has a Facebook group, right? So, or, a, you know, there's a page. Is it a page or is it a group, Ron? Can you correct me on that? It's a page. It's a page. Okay. So, yes, so Facebook, ha uh, Facebook has what are called pages and groups. And so the difference really between a page and a group is a page is sort of like a company or organization, a web page or announcement board, where typically the, the company or organization will put announcements of what, what the goings on are and, and you know, news of, and events. And so it's sort of like a person, but it's an entity at this point. And then the group is more of a discussion group. So people may be familiar with mailing lists, with um, Google groups, groups IO, um, WhatsApp groups, you know, different, different kinds of stuff that way. And so it's an interactive, let's chat about stuff uh, that's, that's relating to that group. So, um, you know, there's plenty of groups out there as well that you can participate in and, and do that. So um, and Facebook recently added things, uh, they have a marketplace, so people can buy, sell, and trade items. Um, so if you're selling, like for example, I've got a speaker that I'm selling, so I put that up on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm, you know, kind of watching it and answering questions as people have questions about it and stuff like that. So I use, I use Facebook to advertise what I'm selling, and so, but 
as a general rule, and, 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 and this is what I'm mainly going to cover today, is how do we use Facebook as individuals for the, the, the more basic stuff? We don't, we don't have five or six hours to, to demonstrate everything. So there, by no means am I going to cover everything. And so uh, what I'm going to do is start by talking about the PC. And I will uh, mention the Mac as necessary, but I'm going to start with the PC. And then we will switch over to the iOS and or Android app. And so um, that being said, let me see if we have our polls here. Um, I still have the poll on here that came up on my screen. Let me uh, answer my question real quick and submitting my question. All right, so I just submitted my question or my answer. And it shows here that uh, 12 of 25 folks have answered the polls. And so right now, the way the answer so far is 48% have voted, right? So 12 of 25, that is almost um, half. And so far, here's what we have. Three alternative answers for this question. How do you use Facebook? And primarily from the iPhone or Android, we have nine people answered that. So that's 75%. Mac or PC, we had 0% answer that. And I don't use Facebook at all. We had three people answer that. So currently that's 25%. And so if other people answer that question as we have this going, uh, those, will, those will continue. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that poll up and, and running so, so far. Um, all right. So since I'm going to talk about the PC and Mac first, what I would like to do is pause for a moment so that if anyone has any questions about what they kind of want to see or what their experiences are in, in the form of a question, like what do you, if you are a Facebook user from the PC or Mac, what kinds of, of things would you like uh, to make sure that I cover? And keep in mind, this is for the PC or the Mac usage. We will get to the app soon. So if my co-host can assist me with that in case we have any raised hands or chat. None yet, but you can add one to app for me since calls can't vote in the poll. Right. Okay. So <laughs> thank you for confirming. Right. So yeah, at the app for Terrence. Okay. And there's no questions on the chat either. But I, since I can't vote, I actually don't use Facebook. So if you want okay. To and here's one for the PC. For one for the PC. Yes. All right. Very nice. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show oh, you. I just screen. had a hand pop up. Oh, okay. All right. So if you want to go ahead and. Um, yeah, I just asked them to unmute. Okay. And who was it? It is Glenda. Glenda? Okay. All right, Glenda. So once you're unmuted, what is your question? Ask one more time. Mm -hmm. Meeting controls window. Oh. Facebook login or sign up. Face. Okay. Can you there hear me? Go. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. They're on the computer. Other than the standard um, Facebook.com, there is a uh, way to use Facebook. There's another address. I think that's a faster, easier, more slim down. Linda Bourne has cover that? Right. Yep. I'm going to cover that. In fact, that's actually the only one I'm going to really talk about today because the other one, while it, the main Facebook page, while it gives you a full experience. Um, it's a for, the book to use. <laughs> yeah. So for, for the sake of, of speed and whatnot, I am going to talk about the mobile site. So, so thank you for bringing that up. Wonderful. Well, a blender. Yep. Yep. And it's good to, good to hear from you. So, so Facebook, so I'm for this demo, I am using the NVDA screen reader. I slowed my speech down and um, I am using 
NVDA with Chrome on a, on a Windows computer. So I'm going to make a few assumptions, and that is that you have a sufficient command of your screen reader, whether that's JAWS NVDA on the PC or VoiceOver on the Mac, and that you have enough knowledge on using a web browser. So I'm not going to really go over a lot of commands like, you know, how do you do, you know, those specific things. So that being said, um, I've got the Facebook page loaded here. So instead of going to facebook.com or www.facebook.com, I went to m.facebook.com. And so when you go to m.facebook.com, it will load a, a, a mobile version of the website, which is not quite as busy as, as the full version of, it, of, of the Facebook website. So it's kind of cool. Um, it will still let you participate with groups and pages and postings and all those kinds of things. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of the dynamic chatting stuff, the live stuff and, and whatnot. Um, so, so it is a little scaled down, but the experience I think for most users based on what I've seen tends to be pretty much from Terrence um, G to the, everyone. The same. And yep. And thank you for that, Terrence. So yes m.facebook.com and because i'm sharing my screen and my audio and all that i'm getting all these it's going to kind of come through with all, with the uh, with the zoom chat stuff so i'm going to manage that as i can uh considering the the situation and circumstance all right so uh, i'm going to quickly do a, an insert t facebook login or sign up google chrome x all right facebook login or sign up so when you first go here, it's going to prompt you to sign in. And um, if you don't have a, an account with Facebook, it will prompt you to create an account. So when you sign into Facebook, you can either use your mobile number or you can use your email address as your username. And then you, of course, create a password. And I will personally hope that you are not using the same password on Facebook as you use on your bank but that's a lesson for another day. Okay, so I'm going to sign in. Link graphic, mobile number or email edit. So there's an edit field for mobile number or email. And I'm going into typing mode here, which you know JAWS calls forms mode, NVDA calls it input mode or browse mode off or whatever. So I'm typing in my email address that I use for my Facebook sign in. Dot. Password added protected blank. All right, and then I'm typing in my password. Bullet. And if anybody cares, my password's one, two, three, four. Switch to the base. All right, so now that I've signed Heading in. Heading level one Facebook, link switch to the basic mobile site. It gives me a link here to switch to the basic mobile site, which, which is kind of what I was there. So m.facebook.com is the mobile site, but it also has one here that the link is slightly different. So I can switch to that and kind of get the, it's almost like a mobile version two of the site. Facebook, main landmark clickable enter login code to continue. And because I've got two-factor authentication, it's gonna ask me for a login code. Edit. So I'm going to go get get that code real quick here. Meeting controls, Zoom row one, all vaults row all menu, copy, copy password, copy one time item, enter, enter log nine blank. Okay. So type in that Remember in. Remember browser document. So because I'm using this browser from a new one to show the login experience, that's why it's having me do this. So I personally use two-factor authentication. So that way, if you happen to use my one, two, three, four password, you still can't sign in because it would prompt you for a one-time use code. All right, so main landmark clickable save browser radio. Don't save. I'm going to tell it to not save my browser because that way I can do a demo again later. Checked. Continue button. All right, so I'm going to continue. Now you're going to get a glimpse into my Facebook life. All right, here goes. Facebook document. Clickable link switch to the regular mobile site. All right, so it is now loaded. If I do a uh, read title. Facebook, Google Chrome X. All right, Facebook shows me that I'm in Google Chrome. Uh, the X basically just means that this is a private browsing window. That's just what I called it. 
Um, so with browsing with a screen reader, you're, you're going to typically use your down arrow key a lot, or you're going to use certain uh, shortcuts like H for heading, T for table, and, and that kind of stuff. So the, um, the H for heading works really well. Um, I personally like using the letter N as in November, because what that does is it will skip all the, uh, all the links that are all next to each other and take you to text. And so that's kind of a nifty feature, especially on the Facebook website. And the letter N works really well with both JAWS and NVDA. VoiceOver has something similar, but it's not, not exactly the same. Uh, with VoiceOver, you will do a uh, VoiceOver left, VoiceOver right, you know, to, to get there. And then there are ways to use the, if you turn on your quick nav, you can use letters like H as well for heading and, and that kind of stuff. So at the very top of the page, and when I say top, I'm not talking visually the top of the page, but the top of the browsing page, as your screen reader shows it to you, it's going to have your primary menu or your primary categories of how you want to browse the page. So I'm going to start at the top. Link switched. Banner landmark link graphic Facebook logo. Right. So I'm just going to hit down arrow as I go through these options. Search Facebook edit. There's a search. Button search. Navigation landmark link home link current page profile link alt plus four messages. One. Link alt plus three notifications. Two. Link alt plus six chat. 89. Link Alt plus two friends link pages. Two, link groups. 13. All right, so that sounds a little confusing, but basically what it's showing here is that you can use Alt keys, like Alt 1 for the home page, Alt 2 for pages, et cetera, et cetera, Alt 3 for notifications, I believe, Alt 4 for messages. So if you memorize what some of these hotkeys are, you can actually use them from your browser and quickly move to those parts of the page. And that's kind of cool because if you ever want to go back to your, what Facebook calls the home page, which is the news feed, you can just quickly do alt one and you don't have to find it from your list of links or you don't have to browse to it or whatever. Link groups, 13 unseen posts, link events, link notes, links. So I've got groups, events, notes. Link COVID-19, link alt plus five menu. So alt five will give you COVID-19 information. So that's how important it is that Facebook has actually made it its own category. Main landmark share with. All right. So now that we're at the end of the main part, I'm just going to keep moving down. Button friends. Write a post edit multi-line what's on your mind. So of course, one of the main reasons why people use Facebook could be because they want to write a post. So if I'm going to do that. I'm going to press enter on write a post and it gives you other options where when you write a post, you can do all kinds of stuff, make your post fancy. You can type in and show what you're feeling, what you're watching, what you're doing, um, looking for recommendations. You can check in, but we're going to do just a very simple post. So I'm going to write, I am writing this post today while demonstrating Facebook for the Haven webinar. All right, so now I'm going to read my current line. Haven webinar. I am writing this post today while demonstrating Facebook for the Haven webinar. Dot blank. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe. Haven webinar. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe. All right, so now, now that I wrote my, my musings on life, I'm going to tab. Post button. And there's post. So they make it easy. So if you don't want to do anything fancy, it's going to just, um, you know, write that post. I'm going to see where this post is going. So I'm going to tab again. Photo button. I can add a photo if I want to. Feeling button. There's the feeling button. Like if I'm feeling happy, sad, proud, and they probably have about 30 or 40 different feelings, if not more. More button. There's more options. Tree Wise Carver changed his profile. And now it goes into other stuff, you know, that's already on my on my list. So I'm gonna go more back button. to the post button. Photo post button. And I'm hitting post. And Facebook there is document. My Clickable post. link switch to the regular mobile site. Okay. So my post has now been posted. So I'm gonna hit H for heading. Main landmark Raul A. Gallegos link heading level three. So what the letter H for heading did is it skipped the main navigation links like home messages, links, groups, et cetera. So it skipped all that and it took me to the main por uh, portion of the page. So, so now uh, it said my name there. 
normally it will say the name of whichever poster or um, you know event or whatever. So it's got my name in there. So I'm going to hit down there and start reading. I am writing this post today while demonstrating Facebook for the Haven webinar. Thanks, everyone. All right. So that's my post. And stay safe. I'm just hitting down arrow. Just now. So the just now, because I just now posted it, later on when I refresh this page, it might say two minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. You might see yesterday, two weeks ago. You know, So it will kind of give you an idea of how long ago this post was done. So just now means that's, well, when I did it. So I'm going to keep hitting down. Privacy. Link friends. So the privacy, that's that's something to, to keep in mind. So there are different privacy settings. Uh, the most common is either friends or friends of friends. And so the thing with Facebook is that the way you make connections with people is that you make friend connections. So I could look up Ron's name and, and ask him to be my friend on Facebook. Now, does that mean he's my friend in person? Well, yes, Ron is my friend in person, but um, I could be friends on Facebook with people I've never even met before. Uh, there are people that I've seen on Facebook that literally have like five, you know, four or 5,000 friends on Facebook. And I almost guarantee that they don't even know four fifths of them. Okay. So, um, and then there are people who are very choosy about who they add on Facebook as friends and only add people that they really know. And so when you make a post on Facebook, the privacy of that post can either be friends, friends of friends, uh, only you, public, or any variation of that where you could have friends accept or friends accept certain groups or only friends from this kind of group, etc. It gets very complicated. Typically, it's going to be friends or friends of friends. And so what does that mean? So I'm going to use uh, Ron, Terrence, Nellie, myself, and Stacy as, as an example. So let's say that I am friends with Ron and I'm friends with Stacy. And, um, but I'm not friends with, with Terrence or Nelly. Um, you know, so if I write a post and it's tagged as friends, Ron will see my post and Stacy will see my post, but Terrence and Nelly will not. If I set my post to be friends and friends of friends, then when I write my post and then of course, Ron and Stacy will see it because they're my friends. But, but if, if Ron is friends with Nelly and Terrence, they will also see the post because they're friends of friends, right? So you can see how COVID spreads. This is exactly how Facebook works. So, so that's kind of how that privacy works. Now, if I set it to public, then everyone, Ron, Nelly, Terrence, Stacy, and everyone else on this call who's on Facebook will see it, whether they're friends of mine or of anybody else or not, because it is a public post. If I set it to myself only, then it only shows up on my own timeline in my own feed. Uh, why would I want to do that? I, I'm not quite sure why Facebook has a uh, post only to me, but um, I have actually <laughs> taken advantage of that with Dice World, which is one of the iOS or Android games that I play where you get bonus gold for posting on Facebook. So rather than annoying people with constant Dice World posts, I will post on Facebook, but I'll set it to only me for the privacy. And then that way I can post all I want about Dice World and nobody sees it except me. And I still get the bonus points for it. So, so there's kind of a loophole, I guess. Um, so that's kind of what the privacy is. Link, like, link, react, link, comment, link, share, link, ads, photos, link, full story, link, save, link. All right. So these are what kinds of actions can you do on a post? And so let's say that Ron is looking at my post and, um, you know, he likes what I said, so he can give it a like. Um, other social media places will call it a thumbs up. And um, Facebook does not have a dislike feature. So there is not an, an, an unlike. You either like it or you cancel your like, but there's not really an unlike. However, what they have done is they've added a react feature where you can react with ha ha, wow, angry, sad, um, you know, so kind of do different kinds of emotion, um, emotions in there. So that's one thing. Now, let's say that Ron wants to add to my discussion or he feels that um, a comment is warranted to what I said, like, hey, you know, I'm there with Haven. Thank you very much. Or, you know, whatever. Right. Um, he might write that or he might say, hey, I totally disagree. You know, you shouldn't be writing this on Facebook. Right. So there are different different things that people can write. And in fact, 
people do use Facebook to share their views on religion, politics, government, child rearing, just about any kind of topic you can think about. There have been people who have made some very real friend friendship connections on Facebook and the opposite. There have been people who have lost their friendship connections because of Facebook or because of things that people say on Facebook. What I tend to do is I tend to respect everyone's viewpoint, no matter whether they agree with me or not, or whether I think they're, they're right or not. And so I also keep in mind that first thing that I mentioned at the very beginning is that people tend to be brave behind the Facebook keyboard. And so they're going to say whatever they want to your face book. And so a lot of times if someone says something that I think is a little um, out there, uh, I don't necessarily take it as serious as I would if they said it in person, because that's generally human nature, you know, so there is that kind of protection. And of course, that's not everybody. So I'm, I'm really not trying to generalize. But as you use Facebook, you will see that 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 tends to happen. So that's what these reactions are. Now, if I um, if I, one of the options is share. So if I want to share the post with someone else, so let's say that Ron wrote something and I want to share that. That's sort of like forwarding an email. So I share the post that Ron wrote because Ron may have written that post to his friends. And if I share the post, I'm sharing it with my friends. And then someone else likes that post, they share it with their friends, right? Again, it's it, this is where it gets very social. So, hey, did you hear that Ron said this? The cool thing about sharing a post is that the post is shared as is. And so it's not like the... Um, it's not like the circle games that kids play where you, you tell a story, you start off with one kid and you whisper a story. By the time it goes around to the end of the circle, that story is so warped that it's not even the original story as it was in the beginning. So with Facebook, at least, it does share it verbatim the way the post was written, but you can add commentary. You can add a comment and say, hey, I'm sharing this from my friend Ron and he says this and, and whatnot. And so that's how information is passed along is by the, the share feature. Linktree Weisscarver changed his profile picture. All right, and that's it for that post. And now it goes into my friend Trey, who changed his profile picture. Anything you do on Facebook, whether you write a post, whether you update your profile picture, your background, uh, change a life event, like get a new job, get become engaged, you know, anything like that has the same kind of features where you can like it, comment on it, react to it, share it. And, and so on. So there, so the, in that sense, it's kind of a uniform thing. All right, so I'm gonna skip that one and move, move to the next one. Link today is Ryan Bishop's birthday. All right, so there's a friend of mine on there. Today's his birthday. So it's giving me that and it gives me a link to that. And so because Facebook tends to tell me everybody's birthday, whether I really know them or not, um, a lot of times when I wish someone a happy birthday, especially if I wish them a happy birthday on Facebook, I'll tell them, you know, hey, I'm wishing you happy birthday. And Facebook didn't really need to remind me that because I already knew. And so I, I tend to try to remember my friend's birthdays for real and rather than just relying on Facebook. But, you know, everyone's different. Link clear notification. All right. So at this point, before I go to notifications and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick to take any sort of questions about what I've covered so far with Facebook usage on a PC or Mac. None so far, but I did want to cover a thing that um, that they added recently, which is the care button. Okay, I, please. I believe uh, it's it's one of the reactions, and essentially, it's like giving a virtual hug. Is I think the point of it. Right. Um, I'm not sure if it was added pre-COVID or at the start of the pandemic, but um, it it's a nice it's a nice little thing just to you know reach out and especially like. Um, People that post emotional things, like I usually hit the care button, like, hey, I can't hug you in person, but, you know, here's Facebook, I think about you. And Terrence, mm -hmm. um, you, you have a, a little bit of vision here, so can you describe what that looks like? The, the care button is, um, it's a yellow emoji um kind of squeezing um if you've ever seen like a valentine's day you know they have the heart pillow that um a lot of the teddy bears will be hugging 
when, nice. when you give a gift, it's just like an emoji hug. <clears throat> it's like an emoji hug at one of those hearts instead of a teddy bear. Sure, sure. So that's what right. it says. Very cool. And thank you for bringing that up. Yes. And so, yeah, they're, they're constantly updating stuff. The nice thing about the updates that Facebook does is that, you know, they're, they're all done server side. And so whether you do an app update or just go to the website, you know, they're going to be uh, typically already there. And I've even seen updates happen, even if you haven't updated the app for a while or whatever. So they're, you know, they're there. Now, one thing to mention about Facebook, and I guess I should have said this from the beginning is, if you are a person who's concerned with privacy, right? So privacy is one of those things that has, has taken a, a different um, role in, our, in everyone's life o- over the last you know, several years. And so this is public stuff. You know? So even, even if you write a, a post and it's, it's only me um, or friends of friends or, or you know, tight circle of friends or you know, whatever, again, you, you are putting information out there that's on somebody else's servers. And so if, if you have the 1984 Orwellian type of mentality that Big Brother watches, um, I do agree. It, uh, you know, it's somewhere else. You don't know exactly where it's going. There have been lawsuits about privacy concerns you know, involving Facebook and other social media. I'm not saying this to scare anybody away, but if you care about some, you know, stuff like that, then you know, please be careful about what you post if you post. And a lot of that, um, I you you know I, I tell this a lot, especially to younger folks who might post stuff on Facebook and then think that they can just erase that Facebook account and create a new one so that you know they can go and apply for a job. There are employers who, while they may not be able to discriminate based on your personal life, but if they kind of see what kind of character you are and you're posting certain things or whatever that are different than the kind of job you're looking for, that may not go well, and so. Um, you know, I, I say that, uh, you know, just to kind of put it out there that Facebook is fun, but it can be misused. Um, and so, you know, just a fair warning for everyone. So, you know, um, very common thing that, that, that sometimes people will do, and they actually even had a national news about this because it started becoming a problem. People would go to, let's say the, you know, the, the, Bureau of of Motor Vehicles or the the state licensing place and get a new driver's license or a new state ID and say, hey, look, my ID came out really well. My picture is really cool. And they actually take a picture of it and post that. So now all their private information is out there, you know, so, you know, just those kinds of things, Um, you know, just so, so be very cautious about what you post in in that sense, if you are concerned um, about those things. All right. And so, if mm-hmm. if you don't mind, I would like to jump in one more time is um, to piggyback on the ID thing. Is um, I would hope nobody here would do that, but I have actually seen pictures of people's credit cards on Facebook, which yep, is I, I don't doubt it. Crazy. <laughs> so, just you know, it like Raul said, be mindful of what you post, and and a, another way to use the only me feature could be like kind of a journal obviously you know, wouldn't put anything you wouldn't want out but just something that you might want to get off your chest or something that you just kind of like the um idea of writing a letter and not sending it you know just yeah that's, you know that's like that's i said once down. again be mindful I've used, <laughs> I've used the notes feature for stuff like that where i'll kind of write you know just kind of things that are that i'm that i'm thinking about they're not super deep thoughts but i do write about them um, for example, the game is something I write about, you know, so when I'm thinking about the game, I'll, I'll often write about that before I start telling everybody about it. And so if you don't know what the game is, it, it's just basically, it's a, it's a mind thing where the more you try to not think about something, the more you think about it, you know, so everybody think Ghostbusters with, uh, the movie Ghostbusters with Peter coming up with the abominable snowman with the marshmallow thing um, that ended up being the, the enemy at the end, because he was thinking of something so benign and so friendly, and yet it still popped into his head. So the idea of the game is, is anytime you talk about the game, you've lost because the rules are, if you think about the game, you've lost. If you talk about the game, you've lost. And so the more people try to not think about it, the more they lose. So everyone in this call has now lost the game. 
And so I write about that kind of stuff, just, you know, those kinds of weird, weird mind, mind thoughts or whatever. Sometimes I'll use the Facebook notes feature to do that. And then I, you can share your notes if you want. So every now and then I'll just kind of share the game and now everybody who reads it has lost, you know, so. Um, so notifications, right? So I've posted that. And if anybody wrote a, a comment or reacted to it, it will go into my notifications, which is basically a way that you can quickly see sort of your activity log on Facebook. And so as I, um, as you, if you comment on something, so if I find a post from Terrence where he writes something and I comment on it, and somebody else comments on that same conversation, I will see it in my notifications because it's, it's a part of, of a conversation that I'm on. Likewise, if I write a post and someone comments on or reacts on it, it will also go into my notifications because that is something that I'm a part of. Um, so, so notifications is a very quick way to kind of see what, what kind of activity has been going on just in case it might've been a post that you haven't participated with for a few days, you know, so rather than digging through hundreds and hundreds of posts just to kind of see if somebody commented on it or added to it, it's going to put it into the notifications area. All right, so I'm going to open my notifications and go Links over here. Banner, search button, Navig Pro message notifications one link alt plus three. So I could have done alt three to go to notifications and, and whatnot, but I just chose to. I did control home and then just hit tab until I got to notifications. So it says notifications one, alt plus three. So it tells me I've got one unread notification. So let's open that. Notifications document, clickable link. All right, so it just, oh, it just switched the Facebook page to notifications. So anytime you switch categories where you go from home to notifications, to messages, to groups, those same links are gonna be at that top of that web browser buffer. And so that's where I use the letter N or the letter H to quickly take me to the beginning of, of the stuff that I really wanna read. Main landmark today heading level five. All right, so I just hit H, so it takes me to the today part of the notification. So notifications will be done sort of chrono chronologically where it's gonna have your newest ones at the top and then your older notifications as you move further down. So I'm going to start hitting down arrow here. Link today is Ryan Bishop's birthday. All right. So there's that notification about my friend. So this was in the main home part of, of the page, meaning in the news feed, but it's also here in notifications. So you'll see that notifications repeat. Um, all right. So I'm going to hit down arrow. Photo. Link Carrie Coston, Kelly Deeds, and two others like your post. I am writing this post today while four link minutes ago. All right. So that was the post that I wrote about the, the, the Haven. So I've already gotten several people who like the post. They marked it as like. Link tree wise cover changed. And his it goes back to my friend Trey there who changes for a profile picture. So I'm going to go up to that post. Link minutes ago. Link Carrie Coston, Kelly Deeds and two others like your post. I am writing this. All right. So I'm going to press enter to open that post and it's going to load the conversation. I am writing this post today while demonstrating Raul A. Gallegos Facebook doc. All right, so I'm going to start hitting down arrow and let's read through it. Banner landmark heading level one link go to home. I'm going to hit H again. Main landmark banner landmark Raul A. Gallegos. There we go. So try to get into that habit if you're browsing on the website to use your letter H for for Facebook and for a lot of other websites really the, um, that use headings as, as ways to quickly move around. All right, so I'm hitting down arrow. I am writing this post today while demonstrating Facebook for the Haven webinar. Thanks everyone. And stay safe. Content info landmark 18 minutes. So I wrote that post 18 minutes ago. Privacy, link friends. Privacy is friends. Link adds photos, link save, link more. So I can add photos, I can save this post, or I can open a menu of more items. Toggle button, not press like. So this is if I want to like my own posts, right? So um, if I have somebody else's post open, it will it'll show me the same thing. So NVDA is telling me that that like button is not pressed right now. So I could press the space bar and you said effectively click the like button. So um, I'm not going to like my own post. I think that's a little weird when people like their own post, but that's okay. All right. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and keep moving down. Toggle button, not pressed react. There's the react button. Link comment. 
And if I wanted to comment on my own post, which I have, I'm going to do that. So uh, I don't want to do that now, but if I did, that's what I would do. Link share. I can share the post, right? So these are the individual buttons that I mentioned before of the things that you can do with all posts. Link Juanita Blackwell O'Connor and three others reacted. Write a comment. Edit multi-line. All right, so there's that comment edit field. So far, nobody's commented on it, so they've only marked it as like. And so if there were comments, it would show that on here. Um, unless you refreshed it. Unless I refresh it, thank you. And I get the hint, so let's see. I am writing this. Let's try that here. Heading level three, link on Graham. Oh, look at that. So I refreshed it, which by the way, with Chrome is control R or command R if you're on the Mac. And, and now it has a comment. Link Juanita Black. From my friend, Ron Graham. Heading level three, link Ron Graham. Good job, Raul. Link like link react link. I. So I'm going to press enter on the like button. I am writing this. And now Ron will probably get a notification that says Raul Gallego says like likes your comment. You know, so that's what would appear in his notification. So everything is connected to each other. Um, if you haven't caught this by now, every time a person's name is mentioned, it is a link. And so if you ever want to see a person's Facebook profile um, so that you can either friend them or unfriend them or block them or look at whatever posts that they have made, you, all you have to do is find a person's name and, and activate that link and it will take you to their profile page. Clickable main landmark, good job. All right, so um, that is is Facebook from the website. I, I would like to pause right here to, you know, before I consider switching over to the mobile app, because I think that's where our polls were, where there were the majority of the users who, who, who talked about that. So I do wanna spend some time with that. So um, any other questions about the PC or the Mac or something Nicole Finley that raised hand alert. Uh, someone would like to, to make a comment on? And I, that one did come through. Nicole, I think, have, has your hand raised. So unless there's anybody ahead of you, I'll let Terrence handle that. She's first. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hey, um, I have a question. Um, what is the other Facebook website, the basics? What's uh, Facebook website? So the, the link to it is m.facebook.com. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the top here to the home and switch over to the, to the basic mobile. And then I'll, I'll be able to figure out what that link is because I don't have that memorized. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm gonna- Link switch to the- Right here. Banner two participants raised link switch to the regular mobile site. So I'm going to switch to the regular mobile site because I think I was Facebook. using the basic site already. So here's the mobile. Heading level one, Facebook. Link switch to the basic mobile site. Okay. So the mobile site, the regular mobile site. Address and search bar edit has auto complete CTRL plus L selected HTTPS slash slash M dot Facebook. Yep. So it's M dot Facebook.com. Tab. Okay. okay. Facebook. Now the basic. Facebook. Friend requests. Let me go there. Facebook friend request. Heading level one, Facebook. Link switch to the basic. And the basic Facebook. is the one that I was using. So let's take a look at it Adri here. A T T P S colon slash slash M dot. So it still starts with M dot Facebook dot com. S E B O O K dot C O M slash A O M E dot P H P question. Slash home dot P H P. So. Okay. What I would probably do if you want to use the basic versus the mobile is maybe, you know, get to the, go to m.facebook.com and then choose which one you want, either basic or the regular mobile, and then bookmark that. Okay. And then that way it'll come up every time you bring up the Facebook bookmark. So to bookmark a page with most browsers on PC is control D as in David uh, or command D on Mac. Okay, so m.facebook.com works on Google Chrome? Correct, it does. Okay. It'll work on Chrome and, and PC or Mac, and it will work on, on Safari on Mac. Um, it will work in Firefox. It will work in Internet Explorer, Edge, all those. You know, I hope nobody's using Internet Explorer, by the way, but if you are, it will work on there. Uh, it works on Microsoft Edge as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. 
And I would like to throw in Raul uh, visually. <clears throat> there was a slight difference between the two, mm-hmm. basic and mobile. Um, one actually showed the stories at the top visually. Gotcha. Just, just that's for that the, tidbit. I be, is the, if it's this one that's loaded right now, this one's the basic. It was the one before that. Actually. Before that? Okay, so that'll yeah. be the mobile. Yep. Yeah. And for the most and, part, the way I've described the navigation for for because i've been using basic but the mobile website in some aspects may actually be a little easier so if you thought nicole you know, if you feel that that it was easy the way i described it now just know that the mobile site is even easier and you have another hand um from sandia okay all right sandia Yeah, uh, Raul, thank you. Um, just a quick question. You showed how you could do those shortcuts um, on Windows. Is there a comparable, you know, you were doing like Alt-1 for Newsfeed. Is there something for the Mac like that or no? Um, well, on my Mac with Chrome, I can use those same shortcuts with the, um, it's option, it's option one, option two. Okay. The option command. Yep. That is super cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, you. you're welcome. All right. And that is it Send currently for hands. Send her today at gmail.com. Sorry about that. What, say again? Oh, I said that's currently it for hands. That's it. Okay. So what I'm going to do, um, and I should have done this ahead of time. I didn't prep right, is uh, slow my speech down on my phone in preparation f- uh, for this. So my, my mistake, and I'm going to get that ready while I do this. So. Uh, what I would like to mention as, as I'm getting this ready, um, the app on Android and the app on iOS is almost the same. Uh, the major difference with the, with, the, with the two apps is that on the iOS app, the categories, in other words, where you have uh, news feed, groups, people, pages, notifications, and that kind of stuff is across the bottom, uh, very much iPhone style, kind of like your phone app and your app store app and whatnot. But on the Android app, they're toward the top. And so uh, that is probably one of the only differences. Everything else is, is pretty much the same. And so while I demonstrate this from the Android um, just just know that that's really the only difference. And so when I talk about all the other um, aspects of it, it's gonna it, it should be pretty much the same. And I say that just because I don't have an iPhone right here with me to to demonstrate as well. So I'm going to get that ready. I, I will also say that the sign in of the um, of your Facebook account is done in in virtually the same way where you sign in with your mobile number or your email address and then your password. And so you would of course use your virtual keyboard or Bluetooth keyboard or braille display to type that in and, and, and do that. And it will basically remember your credentials. And so that way, every time you open the app, it will just be there. All right, so give me a quick moment here while I change the speed here of the voice. There we go. That should be good. And I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to put this on a speaker. So let me just turn that speaker on. All right. Apologies for the silence here. Randall's own service had been mandatory. A condition right, of light so rendering now... lower in the Peregrini class. Right. In the Peregrini class, all it, humans had to serve. I have a feature years. where it turns on a Randall book it, when, as soon as I um, plug in headphones. So that's what it did. So let me fix that here. I'm having all kinds of technical issues when I'm not prepared here. So give me a quick moment here. And while Raul works on that, just to remind everybody, we will be giving away a gift card at the end, a door prize that was donated by RGA Tech Solutions. Thank you all for that. 
um, a $25 Amazon gift card, and um, we'll be drawing from those who are present at that time. So stay tuned, and um, let's see how Raul is doing here. Working on it. I'm having trouble getting this thing to be quiet. Um, so give me a quick moment here. We will send out a follow-up email as usual with a link uh, for a survey. We want to know how we're doing delivering programming for you. We want ideas for future programs. As a matter of fact, Facebook was one of those that came up Chrome. before. Chrome. So Facebook has three notifications. We are moving forward here. There we go. I got it working. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And, and thank you for uh, everyone's patience on this. Um, so if I could get a quick sound check, I want to make sure that people can hear this when I get it to talk. Messenger, Twitter, transit, check in, transit, Twitter, X messenger. Facebook yes. has three notifications. Yeah, uh, we can hear your controls hidden. All right. So I've got the Facebook app on here. And so, um, like I said, I'm doing this from Android and this is using the Zoe voice. Lip, next note of character default. And I slowed the, the speech down to conversational. So um, here we go. I'm gonna start the Facebook app. Facebook, search Facebook. All right. So what it does is it puts me on the search box and I'm gonna explore some of the, the contents here. It's already signed in. I didn't want to repeat that process of signing in because it's, honestly, it's pretty much the same. And if you're comfortable using your, your iPhone uh, or Android for, for data entry of any kind, it's going to be you know, that kind of experience. So uh, when I look at the different categories and then remember on iPhone and, and iPad, they're, they're going to be toward the bottom, even though they're toward the top for me. Selected, newsfeed, tab one of six. I've got newsfeed. Groups, tab two of six. Groups. Watch, tab three of six. Watch. Pages, tab four of six. Pages. Notifications, tab five of six. Notifications. Menu, tab six of six. And then a menu that has a little bit of everything else. And on, on my iPhone and my iPad, those options are sometimes a little different and they're sometimes uh, very much the same, but it's essentially the same kind of category. The, the ones that, that we'll be talking about are primarily the news feed and the notifications. And then if we have time and depending on how stuff is going, then we may do uh, groups and more to kind of show a little bit of, of how, um, um, how the app handles those. And so notifications. I'm going to go tab to five of six, three new selected news feed tab one of six. And so that is selected already. And so a news feed. Um, you will see the, your various different newsfeed items. Now, Facebook does not put stuff in newsfeed in chronological order. Um, there are ways to sort your newsfeed in chronological order, but it's my experience that eventually that sorting gets unsorted and it goes back to the Facebook mode of sorting it. And it's kind of annoying. So Here's, here's the thing. I actually did some checking on why newsfeed items are sorted the way they are. Um, taking, taking the example Facebook of, of um, Ron and, and me and Stacy and Nellie and Terrence all being friends. So let's say that we're all friends with each other. Okay, so we're going to keep it simple. We're all friends with each other. And let's say that everybody posts a message uh, once a day. But as I read stuff, I don't comment on, on Ron's message or uh, on Nellie's message. And I only, I only like or comment on Terrence and Stacy's messages. So Facebook, in its, in its wisdom, is going to assume that I am more interested in what Terrence and what Stacy have to say. It doesn't mean that I don't like what Nellie and Ron say, but it just means I may not be as interested. And so as they continue to post, as everyone posts, what Facebook is going to do is it's going to highlight or, or draw my attention to, to postings from Stacy and from Terrence because it sees that I have liked them, their posts or commented in the past. And it's gonna basically make Nellie's and Ron's a lesser priority where it will still show it in the news feed, but just not at the top. And so what, pre, what will happen frequently is let's say that I start, I become friends with someone on Facebook and I start liking everything they're writing and posting all of a sudden, a week or two later, I'm going to find that their messages are the ones I see primarily at the top, even if I haven't liked them for a while. So it tries to be smart about that. And sometimes it is, but other times it's annoying, especially if you want to look for someone 
And so there are ways to find someone specifically on Facebook. Like, let's say I want to, um, you know, write a message to someone that maybe they don't write that much or they, they've written here and there, but, you know, I still need to find them. So I'm going to tap the middle of the screen to put my focus. Eponine Gallegos' story, Unseen. So something that Facebook has is people's stories. Um, now, I will need assistance from others who have used the story feature of Facebook. That is one thing that I personally have not. It is my understanding that when you go through somebody's story, that's when they kind of post a lot. And it's almost like this collage of stuff, you know, where if someone posts a whole bunch of pictures or one thing right after another, so it's almost like following um, a person's um, social life, essentially. So that's kind of what I've gathered from it, because when I go and, and tap on a person's story, I kind of get to see a whole bunch of stuff that they've written, and then it goes on to the next person, and the next, and the next. So that is my understanding of a person's story, and, and like I said, I, I generally don't do that. So um, I skip that. Kyle Ryan Kuyper, 3H, shared with Kyle's threat story. Eponine Gallegos's store stories. Kyle Ryan Kuyper, Eponine Gallegos. Michelle Martinez's yeah, epic stories. Second. There we go. And so what will happen with both the iOS and Android app is if you're focused on the stories and you keep flicking right, it's going to stay in that story section. And so you have, you, you have to actually change your focus over a little lower to the, to the person's, um, to, the, to the Facebook feed. Um, now, the interesting thing about that is on the website, it showed my friend Trey's message saying that he changed his profile picture. But right here on my first story, it shows my friend Kyle, who wrote three hours ago. And so it's a little different. So Facebook has, has is giving me a, a slightly different experience on the mobile app as it was on the computer. Whether they are taking um, data to say, hey, when he posts, you know, when Raul is, is browsing Facebook from the PC, these are the people he he comments from or Mike Marks is like, but when he's Thanks doing it, when he's doing it on default. the mobile app, he's doing it, you know, um, marking these friends or whatever. So it could be that different. And maybe that's why the experience is different on different devices. Create a story. Eponine Gallegos's story. Kyle Ryan Kuyper. So I'm going to Actions for previous keep posts. clicking. Shift sponsored, shared with. Public, the superpowered workstation to get. So I'm going to go past this, these Actions advertisements. Kathy Bykowski Rawa, 1H, shared with public photo, image may contain text that says she fell in love with an electrician and she got shocked. Keep it going. She fell in love with a crane operator. Characters. All right. So somebody shared a picture and you'll notice that Facebook said text that contains blah. So they shared like a meme or a picture. So Facebook, Facebook is, is actually pretty cool about showing the text of what pictures may contain, whether it's translating that text into you know, the, the image of, of, of the picture into text or even trying to describe what it is. So if you take a picture of a cake, it could say, you know, picture of cake or a birthday cake or dessert with candles or something, you know. So um, the other thing that it does is if I take a picture of, of me um, and, and let's say Stacy and I do a picture together and we post it and let's say I don't tag her, she will get a message that says someone just took a picture and it looks like you, you know, so, it, you know, it tries to do um, intelligent picture identification to automatically tag people. Um, some people think that's a little creepy. Um, I think it's kind of creepy cool, you know, where, yeah, it is a little creepy, but it does show how technology is advancing to the point of, of recognizing people. And I think that at least from a person who's blind or low vision from that point of view, I think it's kind of cool because it, it, at least it describes who is in the picture. Uh, because let's face it, most of our sighted friends or family members sometimes tend to forget to do tags or to say, hey, look at this picture. And then that's all they say. And we have no idea what pictures they are. You know, so I'm, I, I for one, am glad that Facebook does that. So I'm going to keep flicking here. Actions for previous. Three Y Starver, 51 minutes shared with. Public, let me explain what happens when you exonerate traitors of their crimes. Characters. All right, so that's my friend Trey uh, on some political views. Default. Actions for keep previous. Going. Dwayne Sparks is feeling angry. 55 minutes shared with. Public, well, I will truly miss you guys. Okay, uh, another Actions emotional post, post. So I'm going to keep going. Post menu. Sh 
Let's Actions see what previous. I find here. Well, print sponsored. Share. Another ad. Actions for previous I tend to get posts. more ads on the mobile phone than I do. Kyle on Ryan Piper, 1H, shared with Kyle's friends, dictation fail. I tweeted the Buffalo Bills to tell them that their third down horn was extremely annoying. It put third down horn. James Aaron Brown reacted to characters default. All right, so that's my friend Kyle who, who dictated something and he meant to write the word horn and it wrote the word porn. So you just got to love the way dictation works. And that kind of goes into a Honeywell whole nother characters. thing about... Uh, when you write on Facebook, you know, when you dictate stump something versus writing it, Default. Uh, you could get different results. Actions for free. Right, so let's go on. Kathy Bikowski Rawa, 1H. Let me look Actions for another for one here. Post menu, Ron Graham. Ah, here we Tweeting, go. Sponsored, shared with public actions post menu. Ron Graham commented on your post. Raul Gallegos, 40 minutes shared with your friends. I am writing this post today while demonstrating Facebook for the Having webinar. All right, so there it put that in my news feed to say that Ron commented. So it's kind of mixing in sort of notifications with news feed items, right? And so Facebook feels that this comment or this entry is popular enough that I really should know about it. So on the website, when I was demonstrated earlier, I marked that post as like. So I want to see what happens here. Um, a lot of times from iOS, when you get to a post, you can actually use the action rotor to flick down through options and it will take you to things like activate, like, react, et cetera. So it kind of gives you those, those things. Um, you could also double tap and hold and, and it will sometimes do that. So from Android, that's how I do it. I'm gonna do a double tap and hold on that entry. Like. And it brings up the like button. React. The react button. Comment. Comment button. Share. And the share button. So it gives me all those menu items. Com react, comment. I'm going to go to comment. Showing English, US, QWERTY, keyboard, editing, write a comment. So what it does is it puts me in the comment field so that I can comment on Ron's post. So, you know, Ron's comment. So I, I'm adding a comment to the comment, right? Which effectively means I'm continuing the conversation. So I'm going to write, thank you, Ron. Capital T, H, A, N, K, space, Y, O. U, comma, space, shift, capital R, O, N, period. All right, so I just did that just by typing on my virtual keyboard. And now the post button is right above my, my keyboard itself, like where the send button is for texting. Voice input, send, showing English, US, QWERTY, keyboard. All right, so now Ron would probably get a notification that says that Raul commented on his post. I'm going to hit the back button Liz Graves, to Starter kind of go back to back. where I was before. Back. Post Hulu sponsored actions for previous okay. post. And then I get a sponsor for Hulu. So that's kind of my, my, um, my news feed. So now I'm going to go and look at my notifications tab. So I'm going to go over to the tabs. Pages. And I'm going to flick over to notifications. Notifications. Tab five of six for notifications. And double tap that. Tab five of six for new selected. All right. So there's my notifications tab. And now I'm going to touch toward the top of the screen here so I can put my focus there. And let's new. see Heading. what they are. Ron Graham commented on your post nine minutes ago. Unread. Manage the notification settings. All right, so it shows that, that Ron commented nine minutes ago and that notification is unread. So even though I've already responded to it, in terms of notifications, it's still considered an unread notification. It's weird how Facebook does that, but it just means that here, at least in this section, the notification itself has not been attended to, if you will. So I'm gonna go to the next one and see, see what else I have here. All right. I think hopefully my speakers not new. Dead. Ron Here, Ron okay. There we go. Because Ron Graham commented on talking. your post nine minutes ago. An unrecognized device recently. Liz Graves, Y Starver. Ah, here Ron we go. Graham and four others like your an unrecognized device recently attempted. Ron Graham commented on your so post. So an unrecognized device. Um, it puts Managed that in the notification notifications, settings. and that's because when I signed in on the browser. It put here in the app a notification just in case I really didn't do that. It's giving me that notification so that I can take steps in case that really wasn't me who signed in. So that's that's another notification you may get or security types of notifications. All right, so now let's see what else we have. 
I'm going to unplug my speaker and then plug it back in because as I'm swiping here, the nothing's coming up on the speaker. So give me a second here. Let's see. Hopefully my speaker didn't die. So while I'm fixing this uh, speaker issue here, if there's any questions about the mobile app, um, now's a good time to take them in terms of either the areas that I've covered or um, anything that you have specific about. Cheryl, good night, raised hand alert. Two par Ned has lowered hand alert. Two participants raised hand alert. Oh, I'm gonna stop sharing on. Meeting controls row meet here. There we go. Go ahead, Cheryl. Um, I have several questions and I feel really stupid kind of asking this, but um, for some reason, I can't seem to comprehend what the word tag means. And I get tagged all the time. Does that mean that somebody saw your post or somebody heard something about you? So good question. And it's definitely not a dumb question. So, okay, <laughs> that, that I'm glad you asked that. So um, a tag is essentially a mention. So I'll, I'll use, I'll use the example of Stacy and I. So if I write a post where I say, Stacy and I are very busy today with Zoom calls all day long. And so it's a message where I'm basically including her as part of that conversation. And so what I may do is instead of saying, Stacy and I are busy today all day with Zoom is, I might write the at sign and then Stacy, and then it will show me a menu of all the different Stacy's that I'm friends with on Facebook. And one of them will be Stacy Gallego. So I will tap her name and now it changes it to say, Stacy Gallego and I are busy today with Zoom calls all day long, blah, blah, blah. And so what will happen is because I selected her in, in using the at sign with her name, it will send her a notification that says, Raul has tagged you in a post. And so that is her, her cue that she has, um, you know, been tagged um, and, and basically it's a mention. So a tag and a mention is, is very similar. Um, another way that you can tag someone is by, um, by doing, when you do your mention or your, when you write your, your post, it'll say tag friends. And so when, it, when you do that, it gives you a search with, uh, you know, where you can either uh, find people that you that you tend to tag all the time, and um, or it'll show you a a search so that you can type in a person's name and then and then tag them. And so you can uh, a tagging in that sense when it's out of context will change it to say something like, uh, let's say that I write a post where I'm feeling happy, and I might say. Um, you know, I'm feeling happy because uh, um, I'm, I'm no longer sick. Um, and then I, I mark that I tag Stacy because she's also feeling happy with me because she's no longer sick. So then the post would read, Raul is feeling happy with Stacy Gallegos. Uh, I'm not feeling sick anymore. Or we are not feeling sick. So that's kind of how tagging works. So in terms of what do you do about tagging? So the default is that Facebook will let you know when you've been tagged and, you know, it will say so-and-so tagged you in a post and yeah. that's it. So you, you know about it. You can change your privacy settings so that when you're tagged, you, you can go into that entry and either add that to your, your timeline, or you can hide it from your timeline. Like maybe you don't necessarily want to be a part of that. And then of course you can always remove yourself from that tag just in case it's something you don't agree with or, or whatever. But by default, you are, you are able to be tagged and it will simply add it to your profile. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I, I have another question. Um, when you start to share a link with someone, um, you double tap on share. And if you want to share it with a, a particular person in your uh, group, uh, say amongst your friends, do you type in their names to find it and then double tap it after that? Or how do you do that? 
Well, when you share a post, um, you're essentially sharing the post on your timeline. And so you, it's almost like writing a new post. And so it's going to keep it on, you know, on your own timeline. And in that part where you write a post, you can tag other people to say, you know, hey, uh, you know, person one, person two, person three, person four, check this out. And so they specifically will be tagged in addition to your post being shared. And so if you want to share that with multiple people, rather than typing their name in the post itself with at signs, I would probably use the tag friends feature. And then that way it will show you all your list of friends there with a search box in case, you know, maybe you have four or five uh, Toms on there and you only want to share it with specific, a specific Tom. Right. Well, like with a specific one, usually when I search, I double tap on share. And then uh, when it comes up and it said and it, and it, and it said search or whatever it is, if I just want it to be shared with one person, so do I just put that one person's name in? Is there something about like how do you go from there? I'm just not sure of the procedure. So wh what I do is I when I when I put in that person's name is again let's just say it's a person named Tom. You may have more than one Tom on your list. So then you would flick right until it's the correct Tom and then double tap. And then there's a done button toward the top. Um, and then you double tap done. And then that will complete the tagging. Okay. I think that makes sense because one time I did a search and it went to everybody, all of my friends. And I just wanted it to go to one person, but yet it ended up that a bunch of my friends liked it. Right. Yep, but that if, makes sense. But if it's but if but if it's for someone in particular, like uh, I have an organist friend, so I typed his thing about an organ concert that we heard. So I typed his name in there uh, to bring to bring it up. And a lot of times they'll say post um, on Messenger or post someplace else. And it, it, the choices weren't very favorable, so I ended up having to just choose one that I wanted. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and are you, do you do that from the iPhone or what are you? Are, or I'm this... doing that from the iPhone. Okay. And I just did the poll a while ago. I tabbed and figured out how to do it. Okay. It's... Yeah. With, with that, if it's specifically for one person, you can yeah. send it to them in Messenger. And that way yes. that conversation is just between you two. Yeah. Or there, there is also an option um, on the share with where you can share it. Um, it's a little more convoluted to get to, but there is an option under share with if you swipe through or tap through where you can share it specifically with a specific audience. Uh -huh. You can do it that way as well. And when you were typing while Characters, ago, default. On, on your virtual keyboard, are you talking about it was on your phone you were typing or do you have a separate keyboard? I type with a separate keyboard. Well, just now when I was typing, I was on the on-screen keyboard. On-screen keyboard. Okay, yep. I, have, I have a little difficulty with that. And uh, when you're typing on on-screen on -screen keyboard that is on your phone, I gather, uh, do you type each letter, just tap it one time, or do you have to tap it twice with voiceover? I have mine set up on 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 my Android and on my iPhone when I use it to to just lift up and then the letter gets typed. I find that I type a lot faster that way. I'm not sure I quite understand you. So, so the yeah, the default lip, lip. next notification. The default at 4 mode PM. is Message that character. Oh, you, see all. Um, hang, sorry about that. Default. You find the letter that you want to type, and then you lift your finger and then double tap if that's the one you want. Yeah, Email. double tap. That letter. Inbox. Yep. Character so default. that's that's not the way I do it. The way the other way is called a uh, touch typing. And what, what you do with that is you find the letter that you're going to, you slide over to the letter that you want. And as soon as you get to it, all you do is lift your finger and it automatically gets put in as if, you, as if you double tapped it. Oh, that would be so much easier. Where do you have to go to? To do to that, that is up? you, um, all you have to do is find a field, just an editing field of any kind. It doesn't matter where. So even if you do it from the, um, search at the top of your settings or something. So double tap so you have the keyboard and then you, your use, your, you, your you use your rotor and you, you turn your rotor until it says typing mode and then you flick down until it says touch typing. Ah. 
And when mm -hmm. you switch it to touch typing, now be careful, there's another one called direct touch typing, which is a little different. That's for primarily for people who have some usable vision that can see the keyboard or people who are, even if they're totally blind, who have a very good familiarity with the keyboard because that will type it a little different. So the one you're looking for is touch typing. And you double tap on it? No, you don't double tap. You just flick, flick down to it because it's part of your rotor. And then once you do that, then you can set your rotor back to characters or words or whatever. Controls. Okay. Yeah. So you're and, about, to, about to do that, you go into what now uh, on any field? What is it you go into first? Any editing field that brings up your keyboard. It doesn't matter if it's a search or text message or Facebook the post. Rotor and you go to, to touch typing and you flick it. <clears throat> set your rotor to typing mode and then uh -huh. flick down till it says touch typing. Touch typing. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And I think we have other questions. Yeah, yeah, we do. And I was going to say we'll, we'll move forward to the next person, which is Eliza and then Jessica. So, Message. and forgive me if I mispronounce, but Eliza. All right. So once you unmute, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Raul. It's Elisa. Hi, Elisa. Hi. So my question is, whenever you have, well, I have two questions, but I can ask the phone later anyway. <laughs> so whenever you have a friend, I think it's a suggestion. Does that mean that people, su someone suggested that friend to you? No, not necessarily. Um, okay. So uh, what will happen, and you'll frequently see this in your notifications. And mm -hmm. so as I'm looking through my notifications, um, the way Facebook, it kind of does it all based on, on, on artificial intelligence. And so mm. I'm going to use the example again of, of uh, Ron, Stacy, Nellie, Terrence, and myself. So let's say that mm -hmm. we're all Facebook friends. And recently, Ron and Nellie commented on, on Susan's post. I don't know oh. who Susan is, right? But yeah. because Facebook sees that Ron, Nellie, and I are, are, are all friends and they, they both have a mutual friend named Susan and they've commented on her post, mm -hmm. Facebook says, hey, if your two friends know Susan, maybe, maybe you know this person or maybe you want to be friends with her. So it'll, it'll suggest her for me as well. Oh, okay. So that's, that's kind of how that works. That's when I wasn't sure. I'm like, what does the suggestion yep. mean? Because I seen it, I seen it on my iPhone with notifications, and I was like, yep. okay. So, what I would recommend, I know you said you have two questions, but I want to be fair for the other people who no, have it's questions. Fine. So if no, we it's have fine. time, okay. All right. So okay, I think we have. Cool. Is it is it two more, uh, Terrence? Yeah, it's uh, Jessica, and then Ned. Um, if Cheryl got her her answer, but we'll go with Jessica and Ned first. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Hi. This is Jessica. Hi, Hi. I have um, a question. Um, I've noticed that, you know, Facebook doesn't uh, show your location anymore, but since I just moved to a new city and state and town, it now says I do dictation on my iPhone with the Facebook app. And, and now I've noticed that some of my posts, it'll say um, Murray. And then uh, also, I, I don't know why I'm getting like all these pop up ads and stuff. I don't share a ton of stuff. So, so that's kind of a two-parter. So the, the location part is a little weird. Like I've, I've seen it where Facebook is relatively okay with, with updating location. It just depends on what kind of permissions you've given it. Um, it also depends on if you've updated your profile to show that you live in a certain location. So those, those could have something to do with it. Um, so you may want to check your, um, your Facebook settings and you could check your permission settings by um, going into the settings app of the iPhone and going specifically into the Facebook category section and it will show you if location sharing and notifications and all You're those other stuff um, are on. Okay, so it'll, it'll show mm -hmm. you those. The other part um, you're talking about with ads. Default. Um, I'll just be honest, Facebook is annoying with ads. They used to be more annoying until someone sued them for a lot of money. But but Facebook ads is if you, even if you don't post a lot, if you happen to comment on somebody, if they say like, I wrote, I wrote one day that I said something like, um, um, I just recently cha changed to started using Dollar Shave Club 
uh, you know, razors, you know, instead of blah, blah, blah. But I like the hairy shaving cream. Well, all of a sudden now on my Facebook thing, um, I, that wasn't even a post that I wrote. I think I commented on someone. All of a sudden, I'm starting to see Harry's shaving products and Dollar Shave Club products on, on my timeline. And so they're constantly looking at the kinds of words that you're writing, whether you comment, whether you like a post, whether you share, uh, oh, wow. anything. So you, th that's kind of what I mentioned before. You want now, to be careful, you know, with that. Yeah. Now, is it good to, to click on where it says hide ad? You can, ad yep. Yep, exactly. Because I always you, do that. And, yep, you can. Now, and also, that. have my thing set to public. Is that okay, or should I switch it back to friends? You definitely want to be on friends, most likely. Yep, that's totally <laughs> up to you. But I will say this: is I generally, if it's something that's about me specifically, I will leave it at friends. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's informational, so like if I'm sharing something about about NFB or about Haven or about you know our business or whatever, then I'll make that public. So right. you, you kind of have to decide for yourself, you know, right. think of it, think of the analogy, think of this analogy is, is whatever you're saying, something that you would shout out at the top of your lungs in downtown New York, or is it something that you would say at a family gathering, right? right? So, so if it's the, if it's the first one, you don't care if you, if you say it out loud in New York, then do public. If it's something that it's a little more personal or whatever, but yet you're still okay with your friends yeah. and family knowing, then, then you know, like, like at a gathering or a party, then it would be friends. Right. 326 peep character okay. default. All right. Thank Next. you. You're welcome. Right. Ned and then Michael. So go ahead, Ned. Can you hear me? I sure yeah. can. Hello, this is Ned. This is a great presentation, Ron. Thank you so very much. Uh, my, my question is, or my issue is, I use the uh, Facebook on my, on my mobile phone, on my, on my iPhone, and, and uh, it's the navigating that sometimes I struggle with because is it I'm swiping to the right to go down my news feed, but then sometimes it, it I don't know if it jumps out of my news feed, but then at the bottom, I'm into my news feed, groups, watch, uh, notifications. And how did I get to there? I need to get back in. Yeah, those are your tabs. So your, your categories of what to choose the, for the app to go to, those are at the bottom where it has news feed, groups, watch, et cetera. Kind of like on your, on your phone app where it has favorites, recent, keypad, contacts, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm in so, my news feed, I'm in my news feed, but then how do I get that news feed to scroll up or down? So instead of flicking down or moving down, what you wanna do is flick right. So flicking right takes it down. Correct, because what voiceover will do is it will automatically scroll the app. So you could do it that way. If you don't wanna do it that way, then you would have to do a three finger flick up to manually scroll yourself. A three finger up, okay. Yep, which because, that's the I've, normal. Yep. Okay, because what I've experienced, sometimes it freezes on me and I don't know how that happens. And so it, it's not moving. So then I take the voiceover off. I scroll it a little bit. I don't have no clue where I'm going because my vision's low. And then I put the voice back on. Then I can, then I can, the voiceover back on. Then I can scroll. Green off. Uh-huh. But it's, but it's a scrolling from left to right moves it down. Well, it's not scrolling, it's flicking. So flicking, it's by, yes. by its very nature, voiceover will scroll the screen for you when you flick right or flick left. So flicking right is going forward, flicking left is going backward. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, I just, my, my puzzlement was why does it stop sometimes? Why does it stop moving on me? That was my question, so. Right. I may be able to answer that one for you. Do you use screen recognition? What is screen recognition? Um, it's a it's a fairly new feature they added to the iPhone, and what it does is it um, it treats voiceover a little different, where it's it basically freezes the screen. So as you flick things, it's only gonna go through what's actually visible on the screen visually. Uh, so if you have <clears throat> if you have screen recognition on, as you as you flick to the right, when you hit the bottom, it won't go to the next post. It'll just go to the bottom because that's that's where you start hearing your groups. Okay, your, well, so how do I find out if I've got screen recognition on to turn it you, off? 
you can um, you can use your rotor, uh huh, and uh, as you kind of scroll, I mean, you know uh, how you you know how you use your rotor where you uh, make yes. the clockwise or counterclockwise motion with the fingers. You'll hear screen recognition, and when you hear that, then you just swipe you just swipe up, and it'll say screen recognition either on or off. And okay. if you turn off screen recognition, then it'll um, it'll it'll go back to behaving normally. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. But it it is good to turn on from time to time because sometimes the um the photo recognition that describes the pictures and things like that is a little better with screen recognition on or off. Oh, okay. So something to keep in something to keep in mind when, for iPhone users. I don't okay, know about well, for thank Android. You for this information. Mm -hmm. All right. And did we have any other questions? Uh, Michael was next. All right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Great presentation, Raul. Uh, my, I was just going to make a comment. Uh, you know, Raul was talking about the ads he started getting uh, about the racers. And well, it was probably a couple of years ago now. You know, I was uh, during my training to demonstrate for the, uh, my high, Machu Picchu, I started having some knee pain. And so I was thinking, you know, maybe a, a knee brace would help me out. And I hadn't done any searches yet for anything on Facebook, Google, anywhere. I hadn't told anybody that I was looking for you know, a brace or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, I started being bombarded with all these knee braces. And, 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 and it was, I mean, I was really spooked about it because I knew I had not done anything that would have Given, given them an idea, not sorry, paranoid thing. Okay, maybe I was just talking inside my house and Alexa, HomePod, or you know something was listening, was listening or something, and they picked it up from that. And but, uh, finally, uh, I traced back a few weeks prior to that. Uh, there was a photo of me posted uh, during a hike, and I was wearing this old compression brace and so just from the you know them analyzing that photo they figured out okay this guy probably you know wants some knee braces and that's where the best thing I could you know the only thing I could figure out and I mean that, that was really spooky to me but uh, yeah it shows you, you know, Raul talked about the analyzing photos while ago and things that they can pick out and do pretty creepy yeah, that's, that's for sure. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, something else to add to that is when Stacy and I posted that we got engaged, all of a sudden she started getting all these things of, of uh, wedding venues and all that. And, you know, so they can be creepy and annoying, but they also can be helpful. But because that's actually how we ended up finding the place where we got married was because of those Facebook posts. And, you know, that one of them looked good enough. And, you know, so we kind of went there. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It turned out that yeah, you know, some of those were very useful and helpful to lead me to a, a good brace. But the, yep. the fact that it popped up without, you know, just yeah, I was just kind of thinking about it, and it's like <laughs> that's Ooh. kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Any that's other? it for questions so far. That's it? All right. Oh, if so you wanted me to speak on Please stories, I could real off. quick. Um, but we we can see if that's at the end. Okay. Yep, and so um, it, it turned out that it was my speaker that had died, so I've kind of given it a, a quick charge, and so hopefully, hopefully that'll be better now. Philip, I'm looking at Jake. Refreshing. So I'm going to refresh my 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 uh, notifications here, and then I'm going to go on to the more tab, and I'll talk a little bit about the the more and, and what kinds of stuff you may see there. Philip, I'm looking at JP. Rita Castro of Wheeler and seven others liked your post. I am writing this post today while. So I'm going to open yeah. that post just because we've had other people uh, like it and stuff like that. So I'm going to uh, go there. Raul Ega, search. Raul Ega, Raul Ega, Yagos. One H, shared with your friends. So that's been an hour now since I posted that. Wow, time flies. Post menu. I am writing this post today while demonstrating Facebook for the Having webinar. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe. Now, one thing that you can do from these apps, um, I will mention this just because this does happen a lot, is let's say that you... Um, want to share the content, in other words, the text of this post, whether you want to save it or you want to, you know, share this content, with, you know, into either a different app or your own post without necessarily doing a share, you can copy 
just the text. And so there, there's a, um, on Android, if I double tap and hold on the text. Title, com Facebook, Katana, com Facebook, copy text. It gives me the option to copy the text. Text copy to clipboard. I am writing this post today. And so what that default. did is it copied it to my clipboard. So now I can go paste it somewhere else. On the iPhone, you can kind of do the same thing where you can double tap and hold on that, uh, on the entry there, and it'll give you the option of doing that. But also VoiceOver has a nifty little feature where you can copy the text that VoiceOver says. You have to be careful because it literally copies everything when, uh, of that particular area. So the gesture is done with three fingers. And what you do is tap the screen four times with three fingers. And when you do that, it will copy whatever VoiceOver is on. And, and then that way you can go and paste it somewhere else. Like I said, either email or another post where you have to be careful when using that feature with voiceover Message, is if, you, Skylar, if you have the, um, the hints on, it will also copy the part where it says, uh, flick up or down with one finger to see actions, uh, you know, double tap and hold to do this or double tap to activate that. So it'll copy the hint as well. So you wanna be careful with that, but that is a nifty feature, especially if it's a long post um, whether it's an email or whatever. So it's not specific to Facebook when you do the voiceover a quadruple tap with three fingers. Um, Default. But a lot of people aren't aware of that. So I've, I've now copied the text of, of this post and I can go and, um, you know, send it elsewhere if I wanted to. Um, so I was going to look at this post and see if we have any other comments or likes and then I'll go onto the menu. Like button, comment button. So I'm just flicking right. Share button. Liz Graves, Y Scarborough and eight others reacted. So if I wanted to see who all reacted, I can double tap here and it will show me a list of all the people who have uh, reacted. Ron Graham. There's Ron's uh, comment. Good job, Raul. 51 minutes. Like button, pressed. Double tap and hold to change reaction. And it shows that the button for like is pressed, so that means that I, I've liked it. Reply button. One like. Ron Graham. Here's another one. Just checking to see if it tells you there is a new comment. All right. So I believe that it did, although I, I didn't know that that was the, the actual text of that. So this is the actual time, the first time I'm reading that. 38 minutes. He wrote that 38 minutes ago. So see, I'm a little delayed with that. Like button, double tap and hold to react. I'm going to reply button, double tap, see. like button, ah, double tap and hold to react. So I'm going to double tap and hold because I don't want to just like Select it. Select to like, pop I'm up window, choose... love, care, ha uh -huh. Ah, there's the care button. Wow. Sad. Angry. Care. So I'm going to do the care. I'm going to give Ron a virtual hug. Care button pressed. Double tap there and hold go. to change reaction. So I now care about Ron's post. Reply button. One reaction. Raul Gallegos. And now here's what I wrote. Thank you, Ron. All right. So there's that message that I wrote earlier. 30 minutes. Like button. Reply button. Show photos and write a comment. And then it puts me, as I keep flicking right, it puts me on, on the comment in case I wanted to do that. So that's pretty much how conversations work. I do want to share that it is not good etiquette to write about something else into a conversation when you, you know, that's kind of like hijacking, right? So I'll give an example. Let's say that Terrence writes uh, a message on Facebook and says, you know, hey, everybody, I just got a new job and I'm making $80,000 a year as um as a developer for company x claiming it <laughs> so so he writes his post and so there's like 30 or 40 comments about everybody you know saying congratulations terrence great job what are you doing blah 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 and then here comes raul with, with who's who, who isn't thinking about proper etiquette and say hey terrence where's that 10 bucks you owe me you know that that wouldn't be cool that that is hijacking the post um, and it's also implying that because Terrence is now making a nice uh, $80,000 salary that, that uh, he doesn't want to pay up the 10 bucks he owes me, you know, so that's, it's kind of rude, right? Um, again, we're all adults here, you know, I'm certainly not going to be the Facebook police and sit there and tell people how they should write, but it is something to watch for just because, again, it, um, you know, it, it goes into the whole character, you know, what kind of character are you? So well, I'm going to hit back. back. Facebook, this 3.39 p.m. Okay, so I'm going to spend about five minutes uh, talking about the more feature. So I'm going to go to the more. We noticed an unusual menu, tab six of six. Um, it's called menu or more, uh, I forget. Email, so I also could be wrong. On the iPhone, if somebody can correct me, I don't have an iDevice to check. 
on that last uh, option in the tabs there if it's called menu or more because I've seen it different. So Selected. No I'm going to choose so menu. Menu. All right, here we go. Voiceover reads it as Facebook menu. Profile menu. Location. Okay, cool. Top short. Also so selected menu. Tab menu six of six. is sort of everything that doesn't show up in those other tabs, right? So it's it's a little bit of everything. It has your help, your settings. It's got some other stuff in there. Um, you can look at your friends list. Um, you know, all all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna I'm gonna explore this a little bit. So as I go through this list, it's gonna have menu. what are called top shortcuts, and it will have what are called all shortcuts, and so. I'm able to, to look at those and, um, and then double tap to expand those shortcuts. So the top shortcuts are gonna be things like friends, groups, events, um, and thing, things of that nature. And I think my speaker cut out on me again. So give me a quick second here. Plug that in. Uh, speaker died. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk about that. I apologize, guys. Um, so it's a shortcut menu. So it'll say top shortcuts, um, expanded, and then I will double tap on those, and it will expand those the shortcuts. So it'll have that. So let's say I want to look at my friends list, and um, I recently actually did this. It was uh, during during my illness. Um, I I don't I don't. Uh, I don't feel any shame in saying that Stacy and I got COVID in December. And so while we were quarantining and not doing any sort of work, because we weren't really feeling concentrative and, and able to maintain very well, but we were still trying to pass the day. I did a lot of extra reading of audiobooks, but I also cleaned up my Facebook friends list. And so I went in there and you can, you can look at friends. Uh, suggestions. You can look at um, not only the suggestions, but also your, your current friends list and stuff like that. And so I went through my friends list. I sorted it from oldest to newest and saw friends that I'd been with friends on Facebook since like 2008 when I first started using Facebook. Um, some of them I, I really wasn't friends with anymore, like in reality. Um, others were deceased and others were, you know, whatever. And so I kind of did a little bit of a cleanup. And um, so, so that's how I found that. And so that was one of them. Uh, every now and then I'll do the same thing with groups because every now and then, you know, I'll, I'll join groups and, and then um, I forget about them or I don't post, you know, much or whatever. And so I, I just kind of go in and remove myself from groups because I mean, why be a part of a group if you're not going to participate in it? At least that's, that's my thought. And so there we go. I got the speaker. Let me see here. Expand the section. Okay, there we go. All shortcuts. Alphabet type. Top shortcuts. Header. Section is collapsed. Double tap. So I'm going to double top tap shortcuts. here. Header. Let's see what section else we have expanded. for our top Characters, shortcuts. Default. Groups. Button one of 14. So there's 14 shortcuts and groups is one of them. Friends. And button friends. Two, Those are the ones I talked about. Marketplace. Button three of 14. So marketplace. That's where you buy, sell, and trade uh, items. Videos on watch. Button four of 14. Uh, you can videos. watch videos. Memories, button five and 14, four memories. So memories, that's something that I actually have turned off. Stacy has hers turned on. And so every morning while she's drinking coffee and kind of going through her Facebook and Dice World routine, she'll go through Facebook and it shows memories of stuff that, you know, it'll post, it'll say, hey, you know, two years ago today or four years ago today, you were doing this or you posted about this. And so then you can repost it and share a memory. So I don't do that. Um, but the, the option is here if I wanted profile. that. Marketplace. Videos on watch. Save. Pages. Button Save seven posts. 14. Here's my to pages. You. So I can go to the pages like uh, Haven has the page. Um, as, as Ron uh, so so kindly let me know that it was uh, a page, not a group. For news. Haven. Button 8 of 14. And then there's news. Dating. Button 9 of 14. Dating. So Facebook now has a dating feature. Events. Button 10 of 14. Um, events. One upcoming. Events are kind of cool because you can share things like birthday parties. You can share, um, you know, different gatherings that you may be doing. You can share them as events and stuff like that and invite people to come to your event. So it's all virtual stuff. Gaming, button 11 of 
Jobs button Gaming, 12. Jobs. Shop button 13. I haven't been here in a while. Wow, there's all these kinds of things that. Nearby friends button 14. I did not know. 14. Nearby friends, that's more like the whole GPS thing where it may show. Um, it would probably show Stacy is a nearby friend and it may show some other people that I'm friends with who live in my neighborhood. All shortcuts, alphabetized header. And Section now I can go to all shortcuts if I wanted to. And that's literally an exhaustive list of shortcuts of everything and everything and anything and everything you could think of with the Facebook app. Um, sign in settings, privacy settings, notification settings, health, uh, log out, all kinds of stuff are going to be there. As you can tell from the from the brief demo, it is very much speech friendly. Um, this is from TalkBack on Android, but the experience from VoiceOver on, on iPhone or iPad is virtually the same. And, and the layout is virtually the same. So one thing about Facebook is they have tried to keep it the same no matter which app or which platform or which media you're using to, to, uh, to do that. Um, so we're toward the last section of, of, um, of this. So I want to uh, stop and, and do before we go into our closing parts here and, and all that and, and let Ron, Ron talk on, on whatever, you know, to end everything is take, take some time for some quick questions. If you could try to keep your question under 30 seconds, uh, that will really help move things along. And I think Terrence also has something to share in case, in case we don't have questions right away. We got a question. It's from Cheryl. So I will unmute you and go ahead. It's quick. I'll make it as quick. I was a little bit confused a while ago when you spoke about um, the uh, copying and pasting on the iPhone. I'm not sure how to do that. But I understood on copy, whatever voiceover says, you said. Uh, do a triple tap four times. And then after that, I don't know, I didn't quite understand where to go from there on pasting. Okay, so, so and I didn't, I didn't say what you do with it afterward because it, it's not directly Facebook related, but I'll give you the quick and dirty what you do with it, okay? So okay. anything that you want voiceover to copy into the clipboard, whether it's a Facebook post or an email or even the name of an app on your phone, it doesn't matter. It's whatever voiceover says. Uh -huh. With with three fingers, you're going to tap the screen four times. I got that. So I tap, that. tap, tap, tap with three fingers. And that will copy that to the clipboard. So now you go to, let's say, a text message or a note or an email or a new Facebook post. Uh -huh. You're going to use your rotor once you're in the editing field. And you're going to rotor over to edit. And then you can flick down with one finger to paste and then double tap. And that will paste the content that was in your clipboard. Okay. Okay. That's something I'll have to work on. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Next is Michael. Yeah, just real quick. Uh, you know, Raul had talked earlier about, uh, you know, privacy, security kinds of things. And uh, there's also a, I don't know how to really label it, but uh, I would call it a human impact as far as, you know, some people believe that Face, not only Facebook, but other social networking kinds of things can impact the way you think and your actions. And there's an excellent uh, docudrama on uh, Netflix called The Social Dilemma that I would recommend everybody watch. Oh, yes. If you haven't already seen it. It uh, provides a lot of proof from uh, the actual people that created it, you know, a lot of uh, engineers and managers and things that used to work for Facebook and Google and other social media. Would you say, Michael, that uh, people tend to be braver, more brave, or say stuff that they wouldn't say in person just because they're, you know, with the whole social media? Yeah, definitely. Is that your experience? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a I think that's a thing going back to even before social media with internet chat rooms and things. It's just a it's just like right. knowing they don't have to be accountable for the things that they write. Right. Well, and and the sad thing is even let's just take you know I, I mean I'm not going to get into any specifics on politics, but you, you see this happen all the time. There's people who have truly in real life uh, you know have lost friendships 
over it because you know that somebody will post something on Facebook, whether it's even sharing a video of something and somebody else completely disagrees with it. Again, whether it's politics or religion or something, I see this a lot with guide dog users. You know, um, there's people who strongly feel about school A or school B and they practically get to virtual blows over it, you know, and it's like, you know, calm down, it's okay, you know, and so that, um, that documentary sounds really good. And that's it for hands right now. If, oh, never mind. Got another hand. Ned. Go ahead, Ned. Yes. Uh, to follow up on Michael's comment, can you hear me? Yes. yes. To follow up on Michael's comment, being a retired school administrator, principal, and superintendent, we had parking lots to deal with before social media. Parents would gather in the parking lot and talk about the business rather than taking it to the person they needed to fix it with. And so I have found that social media has become the new parking lot. Rather than going to the person who can fix it, they take it to the whole world. <laughs> yep. That's does. my comment. All right. And then Terrence, did, did you have something as well? Oh, um, yeah. You, you, had, you, you had mentioned um, stories. <clears throat> But I want to throw in quickly, uh, since we you left off on settings, um, for those that are low vision and prefer the high contrast um, for iPhone users, I, my understanding has been there for a while for Mac and PC, but for iPhone users, they have finally added dark mode to the uh, Facebook app. So you can get to it. Um, it's near the bottom when you go under the Facebook menu and um, settings. Um, the thing with stories, Stories is kind of taken, um, you know, we live in a cap copycat world and it's just kind of something they they basically stole from Snapchat. And what it is, is, um, and then the reason they're so popular is because people can post things there and they disappear after 24 hours. So they feel that it's less of a uh, footprint, even though we know, you know, screenshots and things like that, like like mentioned earlier, it's still not 100%, but that's that's why people do those. And so when you when you click on it with voiceover and I just I kind of play with it. Um, I don't I don't look at them constantly, but I kind of play with it when Raul mentioned it. And when you click on it with voiceover, it'll um, it basically does the description of whatever they post. Typically, it's pictures with my friends, but they you know some people will share posts to their stories and things like that that will be available to um, for you to see. And so. Um, like I said, with the with the newer, I think it was fourteen point three that introduced it for iOS, with the the, the addition of the audio, you know, the describe right. things. It actually is something worth looking at. Um, okay. As far as yeah, it's just, it's just pretty good, and like I said, they aren't they they don't stay long term. So you know, twenty four hours and they're down. Um, I do see another hand. It's, it's Ted just popped up with a hand. So let's see. And let's keep in mind, we got about mm -hmm. seven minutes and we want to give Ron some, some time. So Ned, unless it's a question, I would, I would, you know, say, let's uh, move on. Where's Actually, Ted, not Ned? It's not Ned. It's Ted. Yeah, it's Ted. Oh, hi, Ted. Hi, I'm Raul sorry. and everyone else. I'm late to the party. I apologize. I had to prepare for a later obligation today. But I just wanted to ask, uh, I'm really interested in listening to what you guys have to say. So is this is being recorded, I presume, and yes. will I be able to get a link for it a little later? Yes. Yep. Great. Yep. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. All right. Well, that will leave that be the last question. And Ron, you can take it all away. All right. All right. Um, again, thank you all for being here today. I think no, no. as much as social media has been in the media, especially this week, um, really emphasizes how important it can be at uh, sharing things, good or bad. And um, I know some people are, you know, as the survey showed, are not on Facebook. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in doing that, I encourage you um, do it, do it responsibly, have fun, make friends and um, you know, we're all here, uh, uh, a lot
lot of us are going to be here on Facebook already. Um, 15 people said uh, iPhone or Android app, and four people said they don't. Those are the final uh, results. We had ni 19 um, altogether, and no nobody voted for the PC or Mac. And thank you for the update on that. Um, so the, um, and Nelly just posted a reminder to everybody. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. We will post this on the YouTube channel as well. Um, I just uh, thank you all again for being here. We do have a follow-up email, as I was saying. We'll send that out. We'll send a link out. And those who submit and wish to participate uh, with an extra entry into the door prize drawing, just leave your name there. Otherwise, you can leave an anonymous comment if you like. Uh, but we like to know how we're doing here. So, um, to give away door prize, roll. Uh, give me a random number between two and forty-one because I've I, I added five names from our last survey. Um, All right, here we go. I got a number, and I've got number eight. Number eight, Laura Mulraney. Is Laura here still? Uh, let's see. Oh, no, no, no. Yep. Yes. All it. right. Laura, congratulations. Thanks. And I'll, we'll, we'll get in touch with you on this and uh, get you uh, hooked up with uh, your door prize. Thank you. Um, and like I say, social media is important enough. We're focusing our next workshop in two weeks. That'll be on the 23rd. Um, it will be on Twitter and Instagram. So if you want to know more about that, if you're using that, um, you want to hear from uh, the Haven team, we've got folks covering these, and we've got a lot to share there as well. Uh, we thank you again. And Terrence, Nellie, Raul, thank you all for um, doing a great job today. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Alan. Stay safe. Bye, everybody.